Inside the last 13 minutes of the Sports Mag Zone for this Monday, switching to cricket, the conversation about the future of existence of the game's longest format has been ongoing with many legends and current players contributing. And our former West Indies captain is leading his uh, voice into or lending his voice into the debate. But Jason Holder says he is worried about Test cricket's future, noting there is not enough financial support across the board. Here's what he said to Hindustan Times in uh, the ILT20 post match interview. You've got the big three, India, England and Australia, who practically command all the revenue regarding the disbursement of ICC funds. And it's difficult for smaller territories such as the West Indies to compete. We just don't have the financial resources that they do. We are struggling to even stay afloat in terms of cash flow and it's hard to develop our facilities and structures the way they're meant to be. And with the little finances that we have, pretty much all the money we get goes straight back up into covering expenses and debt. The 32-year-old says there needs to be a restructuring of the format. If we could come up, he says, with a model where you can have a minimum wage, where you can't fall below a particular threshold, it would actually uh, incentivize players to say, well, look, this is the benefit of me or to the benefit of me playing test cricket. I think maybe cricket may go on in the football model where you have an international window and you've got the franchise window. Maybe that might be a model going forward, but who knows? Now, the talk of payment as the main reason for players opting out of international cricket was addressed by Cricket West Indies Chief Executive Officer Johnny Grave. The CWI boss debunked the myth that West Indian cricketers in particular aren't paid well. As a guest, he was on the Sky Sports Cricket Podcast. It's very, very well. I think and there's a perception in the world that we pay them um, pittance, you know, I think most of our top international players, when you include and factor in Caribbean Premier League contracts, are probably earning half a million US dollars a year. So it's not like um, they're, they're playing for us for free. But yeah, well, this has been a topic that has been making the rounds generally because there is a genuine feeling that Test cricket is at the moment in jeopardy based on its attractiveness outside of India, Australia and England, of course, as Jason Holder referenced as the, as the big three. But there is a, a, a clear case here of uh, a threat to test cricket because of the growth of uh, T20 cricket, franchise cricket globally, and the sort of monetary returns available for players who, who get involved. Yeah, I'll start by saying the fact that the comment and, of course, um, the view came from the former West Indies test captain, Jason Holder, speaks volumes because this is somebody who would have been captain of the West Indies team at a very, very young age. And the thing is, Lance and Ricardo, when I think about it, and the way Jason Holder put it in this interview, you can never and we can never sit here and blame a cricketer for deciding, of course, how they want to, of course, ply their trade and how they're going to go about earning their money. Because as much as we love cricket and you play the sport because of the passion, there comes a financial return with it. And of course, it's a job. They're working, right? And I think based on history and the fact that, you know, and the players have spoken up about this, that, you know, these T20 leagues or these franchise crickets, cricket has been able to help them earn a lot more in a shorter period of time, it is very enticing. And again, I'm saying you can't blame them. In this same um, interview, Jason Holder went on to say that, you know, if if the, um, pra the monies that they were playing for in Test Cricket was a bit more enticing or, you know, would have done the same thing that these T20 franchises would do, then maybe they would consider. So to me, I'm just looking at it from the cricketer's point of view. But then I, you all hit me with this podcast and I'm hearing Johnny Grave saying, well, you know, it's not like if, because based on what people around the world think, we're paying the players like almost nothing to play. So, because we had an international player also, Ricardo and Lance, coming out and saying that, you know, um, they need to do better. They need to pay the players better. We lost Nicholas Puran. Well, of course, he was wrong in quoting that. But, you know, speaking about Jason Holder as well. So for me, I'm just going with what we have right now. T20 cricket is exciting for the players. They're making a lot of money. So I understand. Yeah, everything is relative, right? So I understand what Johnny Grave is saying in terms of the fact that he feels that the players are paid well, but that is relative to what they stand to earn by, by playing in 
franchise leagues around the world. And the fact is, even if you are paying them well, franchise leagues around the world are paying them better. And that is something that Johnny Grave and any other administrator at that level cannot get around. What I'll say, though, is this is where it would help to have a governing body that can take charge of the sport. Because the truth is, and we've spoken about this with Fazir Mohammed at nauseum, mm. the ICC, as fans would put it, is not a real governing body. Because a real governing body would take charge of the sport. Now, Jason Holder, I thought, came up with a very good idea. It is something that I thought long time ago before Faz made me realize that the ICC is not a real governing body, I thought that we would have been going to the football model in cricket where you have international windows that do not clash with what is happening in these franchise tournaments and you structure the calendar in such a way that you can have international series happening at a particular time um, and then you have the franchise cricket happening at particular times. I know there can be potential issues with that. The Australia, New Zealand summer is different from the summer in the Caribbean or whatever the case might be. But I think those are things you can work around. But as it is now, you are going to continue to have the issue, especially with players from countries outside of the top three, that once they produce any sort of quality, the lower of the T20 franchise money is going to be so much yeah. that they will have absolutely no choice but to play the T20 franchise leagues. Faz has already started sounding out about Shamar Joseph because and if he right. continues yeah. in the way that he has started down They're under, it is only a matter of time that he is performing mm -hmm. and that he's gone to play a lot of T20 franchise leagues and yeah. West Indies cricket will suffer like and boards like that as well will continue to suffer whenever um, because they won't be able to match the financial power yeah. of the franchise well, leagues. Well, speaking about financial power, we have to pay some bills. So let's take that break and come right back. We've got to make our money. money Mariah. <laughs> we could just use your money. Uh.